Right. That makes sense. That was the other thing that I was going to ask you. It seems to have been, at least from what I've been reading and hearing about the Russian military, it seemed like this would have or should have been over already, but they seem to be having more difficulty than I think people anticipated. Is there any... I could think of maybe the, the the Russian military is not as prepared or equipped as everybody thought, or have the Ukrainians just been putting up really good resistance or kind of what's the situation there? Well, I think it's a little bit of all of these things. I mean, you know, ultimately, th- this is the lesson of any country that tries to invade another country in the modern era. You have a significant, vigorous defense uh, that will be put together. I mean, you know, if you think about the American Revolution, and the Brits coming to, uh, to, to the North America. Uh, that didn't work out so well for them in part because it's hard to invade another place. Um, you see the same thing with respect to, uh, to the US and Afghanistan or the US and Vietnam or the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. I mean, you can uh, with significant military advantages you know, really reduce a place to rubble. That's what the Russians did in Chechnya. But the reality is that you don't win. Um, you at, at most you have a uh, uh, an expensive, uh, bloody, and ultimately unsuccessful occupation of the conquered territory. Um, you think about the IRA, um, and that may be the scenario um, that that is most instructive as we might think about what happens next in Ukraine. I mean, maybe the maybe the the Ukrainians will be able to continue to resist at the level that they're resisting. Uh, maybe they won't. But if um, if for you know the if for Putin he gets what he wants in the end and there's a, a you know the government in, in in kiev is is tossed aside and he's able to impose a new government how long is that government going to last um uh, and how much government uh security will the russians be required to place if it's a government imposed by outsiders over their own their own people um you know you have um you know even when you win you lose it seems to me uh, from the Russian perspective here. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I consider this kind of a baffling choice by Putin. Um, the, the scenario of, of Ukraine and NATO, it wasn't going to happen anyway in the short term because of the occupation of, the, of, of Crimea and the Donbass. Um, and that you know, you know, division that you saw in Europe a month ago, some of these countries are more pro-Russian than others in, in the European Union. Uh, now they're all on side. You know, uh, you know, the opinion in Finland for joining NATO, it was 19 percent a couple of years ago. It's now over 50 percent. You know, this mm-hmm. is a country right up tight against Russia that has always, always argued that the best way to deal with the Russians was not to antagonize them. You know, that that you can be in, you know, the Finnish argument was you can be independent. Or you can be a tiny Finnish speaking province in the Russian empire yeah. you know and and you know they sort of had to tread carefully um sweden a, another neutral country um you know also tried to sort of navigate between the shoals of nato and the like uh, both of these countries may very well be in nato by the end of the year because of the um the actions that russia has taken and the fears that it has generated within um within even independent nations uh, separate from uh, from nato and the european union um in uh, in europe and switzerland of course among them Right. So what are we looking at kind of kind of going forward um, with you at both U.S. options and in Europe more more broadly? What what kind of things do you sort of foresee or are potential options for what could be happening in the next week, month? Well, I, I think, you know, I think that, you know, a lot is going to depend on uh, on the impact of these sanctions. Um, that is um, not a trivial matter. Um, there is a significant effort at resupplying the Ukrainians in defensive weapons. Um, will that be able to continue? Will the Ukrainians still be able to have materials delivered inside the country? Um, what you know? What will be the status of, of, of Kyiv uh, going forward? I mean, there are so many uncertainties about how this process works out. Um, the, uh, you know, I think that we recognize the limitations of prediction uh, when we recognize that just about all of the folks who really study the military, I don't study the militaries particularly, uh, all of them thought that, that, um, that, uh, that, that Russians would be able to conquer the capital uh, within uh, four days. And we're, all, we're already almost a week into this and, um, and Ukrainian defenses seem to be holding pretty well around the capital. And whether that will continue to be the case, who knows? Um, but 
you know, I, I hesitate to say much by way of predictions because, of course, you know, the people who know a lot more about the military um, the configurations, the uh, armaments and capacities of the Russian Ukrainian military, people who know a lot more about that stuff than I do, um, didn't particularly end up with uh, a prediction that was borne out in the first week of fighting.